Hello there, everyone, and welcome back, of course, to the Enclave run here. We're, we're, we're really playing as the United States of America. I'm your host, of course, as you know by now, Mr. Mocha Lover. And we got to invade four ways, but we got to begin again. Since the Enclave has become an established government, we've been restrained by the waste and economy. However, there are rumors of a hidden casino off in the mountains in the Mojave that contain riches beyond anyone's belief. Backed by a strange radio signal stating to begin again at the Sierra Madre, unfathomable riches are what we could most effectively use to our own gain, however. Everyone who ever ventured there has never returned. Followers, prospectors, NCR army and rangers, and even our brotherhood assassin has gone missing venturing to that forbidden place. It's a great risk. One we can easily prepare for with the knight of the US army. Plus the benefit of a separate pre-war casino can make this way centers forget their woes for a little while, and take some power away from New Vegas. Oh, casino? I'll give my best suit. Begin the Sierra Madre chain. Focus on pragmatism, not hedonism. The reinauguration of the United States Air Force Academy, for the first time since the bombs fell. The United States, or the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs will welcome the new cadets to lead the United States Air Force into the future. After days of work and reconstruction, the President was at the ceremony welcoming the first class of cadets in over 200 years. Cadets, cadets are expected to learn about not only air tactics against a modern Air Force, but as well as a myriad of a settler and tribal Air Force equivalents that have sprung up in the West in the recent years. Further, they will be expected to follow a strict regimen of discipline, military conduct, as well as a higher learning benefiting of officers. While there are plans for the reestablishment of the military academies on the East Coast, those plans are on hold for the foreseeable future. We roll the skies. Great. Oh, we get some... Oh, God. Oh, nice. Oh, that's really nice. Actually, that's really good. Fantastic. Uh, planes. I can't even th I can't speak anymore. A good deal with Eureka, Arcata, Arcata, Enclave, Free Up Folk, Installation Management Command. While the Wasteland can develop America's old military bases, only Enclave knows what truly lies beneath these old bastions of democracy. Secrets of the old world installations will be ours before they were secrets to begin with. Restore Fort Carson. America's interior fortress, though the Great War saw its walls fall, regardless of the massive base battle to push east. And further restore our Dugway Proving Ground, our old chemical weapons testing ground in Utah, where some of our more questionable but effective weapons of war were developed. And we'll do further restore advanced Air Force Base. One of our training bases in Oklahoma. Another stone in restoring the Air Force Command over the skies of uh, America. Vault 22. Also, we're doing Legend of the Sierra Madre here. Um, Vault 22 is reported to be a veritable verde vegetable garden, and was a treasure trove or treasure sought after by the NCR OSI. We, however, know what happened in Vault 22. And then, Executive Orders, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. Trigger the epilogue, detail the fate of America, note that for best results, you should finish an election, press, and segregation trees. Um, so, we'll wait for that one first. We have no gex left, so we close out of that one. Political actions, close out of that one, so... And as you can see, the Chickasaw Muskogee Coalition is justifying against us, which is fine because we don't care about them. This is super nice that we can't ignore this at all. Nice. Better fighters. Oh, heck yeah. We're literally going to roll this guy's here. Uh, we need more composite materials, but that's a normal thing at this point in the campaign. And of course, we'll continue to core a lot more, building air bases that grow the plants. Since our return to the Mojave, we've heard rumors of Vault 22. In particular, the notes of Thomas Hildren of the NCR Office of Science and Industry. He spoke about a vault of green plant life, and what could be an agricultural boon if its secrets could be unlocked. Well, we know the secrets of Vault 22. It was actually one of our more benign experiments, and should have been a roaring success, of course. Vault Tech had screwed up. For all the horrors of the Vault program, this was one unexpected. An experiment on a pest control fungus caused it to jump from insects to humans. The entire vault was infected with weeks, within weeks, and with only a few escaping into the wasteland. Corpses were reanimated, and the entire vault was written off as a loss with no data as we watched zombie like spore carriers begin infesting the vault. So we could send in a team of scientists with an escort, perhaps we could recover some data there. Unlike the NCROS side and Vault Tech, our labs are the best in the wasteland and are more than capable of handling the horrors of the vault. No two danger sealed up. Dispatch team. Armed with flamers, absolutely. Manual labor. Passes Fair Labor Act. America for Automation. I like this one, so we'll probably go with this one first. Remember the automaton or automation rides. Incorporations replace hardworking Americans with soulless robots. We'll not repeat the mistakes of the past and we'll ensure that for every robot on the workforce, there should be at least three non robot per workers on a payroll. That seems doesn't seem very automatic, but you know, whatever. Baltzek. Upon securing plane runners, we made a horrifying discovery. Baltzek survived the Great War. Well, survived until landing took him out anyways. However, they discovered this has raised a question about the various vault -Tec vaults and the fates as well as the largest most prominent pre-war corporation. It's no secret. The vault -Tec was the epitome of everything wrong in the pre-war era. It is a secret we blame them for everything wrong that can be traced to us, but we won't talk about that. Prioritizing profit over ethics, predatory sales tactics, and unethical experiments on people for nothing more than to increase the bottom line. 
A side control of vaults like Vault 8 and a handful of others, most vaults we've come across are nothing more than nightmare uh, horror shows, despite the horrendous results of Project Safehouse. As we uncover more and more vaults, the unspeakable terrors with them, many have seen fit to erect a monument to the thousands of Americans lost in part to Vault and City's desire for profit. On the remains of the children of the cathedrals, well, Cathedral, which is also the location of the first Vault Tech, Vault, the demonstration vault, we've erected a monument to those that lost. It's a simple wall with the numbers of every vault we've recovered and its horrendous experiment. Some say that standing by, you can hear the voices of those lost whispering and never forget them. What do the voices say that Master lives? Oh boy. Also, how long is it going to take us to a good word, these guys? Oof, that's a long time. Just finding it. Oh. Oh, we should probably be more ready for that then. Um, so you guys are doing what? You guys are all going to the pair drop. Could we, in theory, take out these guys with just a single slew of power armor? No, probably not. You guys are I'm gonna do something else instead. And you guys are just around there. That's fine. I'm gonna take you all away for this. That's fine. There you go. Have fun with it. I have a lot of fun with it. Yep. Now recovering from enemy bombings and whatnot, so kind of sucks, but whatever. Yeah, we need the Green Mile. The demolition teams moved in, covered above by modified vertebrates, vertebrates of armed with flamethrowers. Uh, the troops burned their way into the canyon, encountering a variety of hostile flora and fauna before reaching the entrance to the vault. Burning their way in further, the officer in charge discovered that their filters were being filled up at a rapid rate. Having been briefed on the spores in the vault and ordered the team to fall back. A medical check found they were uninfected, but regardless, it was a good call. The demo team was requesting additional filters before heading back in, of course. Our science team was also stocking additional filters on their suits, to keep me posted. It's approaching Sierra Madre. Our expedition was made up of scavengers, followers, scientists, and a few caravan guides, a governmental archaeologist, and a heavy contingent of the U.S. Army. Vertebrates flyovers pinpointed its exact location based on a caravan map and an old brochure where we found. Parts from the pilots reported a strange orange cloud that seemed to be emanating from the resort. As our expedition approached by foot, they encountered a cloud which rapidly corroded and destroyed a protection scout we sent in to analyze the cloud. A soldier in our advanced power armor was almost lost when he entered to the collector sample and had been cut out of his armor. Had to be cut out. Thankfully, he succeeded in his mission, but had to be sent via air back to New Vegas for treatment. A base camp has been set up, and a sample of the gas clouds has been sent to the CRD depot for testing. That's weird. All that for casino seems a bit much. We didn't have anything to do with it, right? That's weird, but as for war, pre war stuff goes, that's pretty standard. Dedicated to the Supreme Court. Whispers of hope. I mean, I'll take the extra stability and political power. We remember America. In his darkest hour before his election, Grant asked, Is there anything he left? Anything that still carries America's voice? The president's decision to save Flagstaff demonstrated his faith that the answer was yes. America didn't need nukes, and neither the slaves who deserted in the dark of night. The followers who spread their teachings in the lands of the Midwest Brotherhood and the Minutemen who held the line against the Institute. Granite was a flawed man, he made many, many mistakes, but he turned the enclave into a bridge between the old and new world. He brought the United States together. Thanks to him. There would be men and women, and who wore its flag proudly. At Hoover Dam, at the Second Alamo, and even in the Capital Wasteland, men and women who walked out of in, into a history deeper than they knew. The men and women of America. God bless the enclave. As, of course, we prepare for more war. Pretty normal, though. Pretty normal for us, at least. Good. Good pair drop. Little vault of horrors. The armored de demo team struck the vault once more, this time armed with more flamer fuel. And I have largely cleared out the entrance hall. They are reporting that the vault is in a massive state of disrepair, and the elevator is out. Curiously, the vault is further infested with giant mantises, though they weren't much of a threat to soldiers armed with flamers. They've also encountered the spore cures, torching the muted aid to beasts as well as air around them to keep the spores from getting into their filters. The team is setting up a base camp in the second floor oxygen recycling center with a science team hoping to use the system to unleash a defoliant that should kill all plants with spores within the vault. Thankfully, side of contact need for new filters, the troops are in good spirits even given the effectiveness of the fire against plants. Who knew? Long arm, the law comes home. Another milestone for the Reno Initiative, New, new Reno has a, a new building to add to its list of landmarks. The C. Clifton Federal Building was refurbished and renovated in a Herculean task after the building was looted and near destroyed during the Great War by riders trying to obtain U.S. weapons stored there. Now it stands. Uh, restored and renewed as a testament to the Reno Initiative and the drive of the President granted to restore the waste to glory. The building will serve as a Supreme Court and is expected to begin hearings here in the next coming weeks. The opening ceremony saw the President reaffirming the other commitment to return the rule of law to the waste and that this, this development was to be a cornerstone of that philosophy. From law, we shall return America to order. Cool. I think I read this one too. If you want to this one, please go ahead. I don't know the First Amendment. I think I read this one as well. There you go. Um, anything else? 
anything else around here? Oh, Bloomfield Space Center. So I'm a pre-war space facility to survive time in a nuclear war in southwest Arizona. I'm not saying we should launch a rocket in the sky, but we're launching a rocket in the sky. Uh, we need Seattle. Rebuild the four states commonwealth. As we extended America into the pre-war commonwealth of campus Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, we must decide how to govern and administer them. United States of America. With control of California and Nevada, we can make beginning the, begin the hard work of freeing the rest of a great nation, and perhaps some others, too. Oh, yeah, it's all green. It better be all green. Oh, we're going to have some serious problems here, man. The cloud. The chemical core has been set in the poison cloud. That permeates the Sierra Madre. It's horrifically corrosive, self-replicating and toxic to the skin and lungs. It preserves dead flesh. Seems to have mutagenic properties and is why in a pre-war casino resort we have no idea. Uh, pretty standard for the pre-war America, though. As for a weakness, it seems resistant to everything conventional we've thrown at it. We can incinerate it, but only at incredibly high temperatures, and it leaves beyond a residue we only have to then have to dissolve in acid. Cryogenics, however, seem to have the best effect. Freezing the particles and causing them to fall to the ground, while well, this doesn't neutralize it, does allow us to collect it for acid disposal. Maybe our only chance to pierce this cloud and find the source of this strange cloud. From there, it can be frozen, dissolved, and hopefully forgotten about. I'm resisting the urge to do an ice pun here. I guess I should chill out. I don't change my mind, just bury the place. It's probably not worth investing in all, all of it, but not a kid. It's alright, we're going to do it anyways. Uh, not a case of green thumb. One of our scientists was trying to repair the elevator when he was ambushed by a spore carrier that was sleeping in some plants nearby. The suit was breached and he suffered severe lacerations to his leg and arm before a soldier arrived and burned the spore carrier. It was rapidly evacuated to one of our medical centers. We don't think he was infected with the spore, but we can't be sure. Security has been doubled and the officer in charge of instructed his troops to burn the areas of plant overgrowth. The other members of the science team are confident that they can get the old oxygen recycling centers working to spread the defolium. Poor man, I hope he's alright. That's right. We gotta take care of our own. We all have a duty here. We all have a duty. Never forget your duty. Um, give them more organization and less losses. And Allegiant Gorillas. With Allegiant's collapse, Gorilla Raids on American Forces come to an end. On Chicago. I like more organization always. More text. That's pretty decent as well. We're gonna deal with this one day. Discover presidential proportions. Mr. President, astounding news. Air Force One, we found it. In the ruins of Denver International Airport, scavenger teams reported a particular airliner with an absurd amount of automated defense systems covering it. When our troops approached, a few recognized a blue and white paint job as well as the markings in the interior of the plane. That's uh, worse for wear, but intact, and a few of engineers on site. We believe that they can easily get the airliner flying again. That is, of course, if you want it to. I shall soar on the wings of liberty. A bird of bird again. It's good enough. Pacific Watchtower. Resting on the Channel Islands just south of the Californian mainland. Uh, the base sat derelict for years given the difficulty of sailing out to the island, uh, as was developing it as a settlement. Even during the reconstruction, supply by air proved difficult until a proper supply ship run could be established. Now, however, the, outside the airfield, the Navy wishes to establish a high power radar to detect any and all approaches from the south to protect the American mainland from pirates who may want to venture north from South America or sneak around from the north. Freedom Ahoy! The last of the Enclave Navy. This guy almost turning into TNO, but there's still a lot of things to read. To much of a surprise, a decrepit old naval enclave vessel has docked into a primary naval base. Stepping off was one salty bunch of sailors in enclave naval uniforms headed by a woman who stars uh, belied the experience her age gets. Providing the correct clearance codes, there was none other than the crew of the USS Eagle, the last ship of the enclave navy. Leading the ship was self-styled Admiral Jean Richard, who was promoted when the ship commander passed away a few years ago. They've been serving as privateers for hire in the southern hemisphere after being deployed near Seattle when the rig went down. When they, on Clive and America returned, they set sail, and upon arrival, many wept tears of joy, seeing their flags wave. Well, Admiral Richard had offered her services to the President of the United States, citing years of experience beyond anything we can muster in the near future. And that Admiral protect our shores. Last of America's carriers. Alongside with Admiral Richard came her ship, the USS Eagle, well, on or was left of it. The last of the United States supercarriers, the ship was over 200 years old and had quite the story. Within her rusting hull are parts from no less than five of the carriers that served in the Pacific Fleet when the bombs fell in 2077. Over the intervening years, the ship was instrumental in surveying and understanding the post-war world. It was the Marines and sailors aboard the Eagle that established Navarro, freeing the ship up from fairing vertebrates of the mainland, and was further spared when Richardson deployed it to the L.A. Boneyard when the rig went down. In the years since, the ship sailed south, hoping to sail around the Cape Horn and sink up with the Enclave on the East Coast. Sadly, a run-in with the pirates in the South American waters left the ship damaged and its commander dead. It was when his protege, Jean the Richard, picked up our signal that she and her inherited crew made what repairs they could and sailed north once more. Now it sits, listening heavily in uh, San Diego naval base. While the ship itself can be refloated, its aging and state of decay after 200 years of hard service leave it useless as a warship, but that doesn't mean we can't use it. Let's grab it for parts.
What makes a superpower? Turn to muse museum ship. I kind of like this one, and we needed that one, but we're going to turn to museum. What makes a superpower? Most nations even operate a navy host, nothing more than a small flotilla of canoes or led by clipper or barge at most. Only the largest, most technologically advanced, like the NCR, the Brother, are capable of sailing actual fleets of warships with the Legion classes being an outlier. Aircraft are a forlorn dream for many nations, or something beyond their tribal existence, with even with, with even the NCR struggling to field warplanes, much to the detriment of the rest of their military. To merge the two into an aircraft carrier is such a laughable concept that most nations don't even bother to. Even pre-war was a struggle to field and maintain one carrier for most developed nations. Sailing one required just as much effort, and as many a wasteland nation would expend their entire nation just to sail it, destroying themselves in the process. Of course, most wasteland nations aren't the enclave. Our growing industrial uh, might, vast reserves of manpower and technological mastery, we can field a vast armada of warships and entire fleets of aircraft. With our trailer USS Eagle, the ship computer data banks contain the schematics for the old vessel and allows us to build aircraft carriers for the first time in over 200 years. Let enemies of the Enclave tremble in fear when the sight of old war supercarriers appear off the coast and unleash their deadly payload. If there was ever a symbol that America was back, it would be our aircraft carriers. And thus the Eagle is on. Oh, look at that. Enclave carriers. That's freaking amazing. Oh my god. Mobile hangar. More supply use, less speed. Deck size gets bigger, though. That's pretty, probably the best one we want to choose. Yeah, screw it. Holy crap. It's amazing. Carrier cast. Oh, God. Congressional Congress passes Fair Labor Act. The Senate today passed the House bill for the fair hiring of Labor Act. The first law in over 200 years is meant to protect the rights of the con man against auto automation. The Senate voted unanimously in favor of the bill, backed by several labor organizations, the NGOs that spoke of the dangers to an economy over automation. The bill proposes that for every auto automaton corporation utilizes in production, there must be three organic workers hired at the same time, creating three to one ratio. Several robot repair and production entities decry the laws damaging to the market and have issued a challenge to the bill, but it still remains to be seen if the bill will take effect. The president expects to sign the bill in a lot in the coming days. The right of every man is to work. This won't have any negative consequences. And it gives more weekly stability that we don't need, apparently. Oh yeah, seabirds. Nice. Well, all I can say is, uh, yeah, that's not probably good. Seymour versus or Agent Orange. The lead scientist on the Vault 22 project has informed us that she uh, and her team have gotten their recycling systems working and are starting to pump uh, the defoliant through the vault. In other news, soldiers made an assault on the third floor, burning out much of the space and spore carriers down there. The commanders noted that the filters required less change, meaning our efforts at torching the place are reduced, reducing the levels of spores infesting the vault. Um, <clears throat> as for our arrest and refit, we have plans on leading an assault on the fourth level of the vault, hoping that by then the defoliant has done its job. Where did we find the 300 year old defoliant? Get her done. Nice, look at all that. All those divisions. Basically, 40 divisions encircled there. Fantastic. And they're literally all dead. Oh, love it. Just makes me happy seeing that. And all that's left are bugs. This whole teammate's way down to the com level 4 common areas, immediately reporting that the Napoleon did its job. Much of the plant. Life is dead and decaying with what little is left that are happily burning up. They come across a possibly a dozen spore cures remains, all dead by the defoliant and have unceremoniously burned up the bodies. The only real threat comes from the giant menaces that populate the lower ends of the vault, hardly a problem for power armored soldiers. The scientists have moved down, set up the old vault dwellers or vault overseer's office, and have begun taking air sample readings to determine when it's safe to breathe in the vault. In a promising update, the injured scientist has returned to duty, thankfully not being infected or injured, and is ready to get to work. Great, seems like a worthy endeavor in a white Sierra Wonderland. The crowd plan worked finally, with army engineers and modified vehicles and power armor cut a hole through the cloud. From there, the frozen particles were collected for disposal, and a quarter of industrial fans were installed to supply the engineers working their way to the resort. As they approached the city, however, they started taking fire from a series of crazed travels in hazmat suits living in the resorted villa. Being we didn't expect anyone to be alive, our troops were, were equipped to return fire and were forced to call in air support while reinforcements arrived. After a few uh, hours of advancing under fire from a seemingly un unending number of travels, we've reached the gates of the Sierra Madre and are preparing to enter the resort now. The casino is worth it, right? All right? Think of the money. We're here for, we're not here for money, we're here for knowledge. What are you talking about? There we go. Destroy, destroy, destroy. Our enemies at least. 
enemies need to be destroyed. So, Baron Hooper Dam, um, America's Mountain Fortress. Fort Carson was one of the largest bases this side of the Mississippi River, home to thousands of soldiers, their families, and civilian contractors that worked there pre-war, like all the pre-war installations. The passage of time has not begun. However, the bases are large sizes. Importance, even automated defense systems keep scavengers and even the Midwest from brother at bay. With the automated systems removed, the base is ready to receive ten units and the families. I was well preparing a soldier for moving east across the United States. Oh, look at the view. From Oklahoma, from, with love. Uh, another training base that we moved over towards, strategic bombing, given a strategic location in the central U.S. plains. Much of the base's training records and manuals were left untouched, like we've seen in the previous bases. However, the base was home to an unusually large number of ghouls, as well as the brain fried thralls that are known to haunt this region. Regardless, the Air Force are reporting the base is at operational capacity and ready to start conducting operations in the central and east re central regions of the U.S. Fly Eagles fly in the grounds of Dugway. Dugway Proving Grounds was the center of the U old U.S. Chemical Corps, which continued service with the Enclave Bomb today. today. With this uh, comes a historic uh, history of chemical weapons and America's mastery of the material that arrived with the atomic bomb. Let's close this dark chapter in history for further restore of Pueblo Army Depot. Sitting in South Colorado, Pueblo Depot was reduced to the bone by the Brotherhood, that, but that doesn't mean we can't find a use for it. And then Nellis Air Force Base? Well, the base was under the stewardship of a series of vaults to send in tribals that kept the place running it. Nellis is more important to the government than tribals. And uh, further story in Fort Navarro. What became of the mighty fortress of the Legion? Many of our engineers to tear down the Legion, bull standards, and put up back up old glory. Now, since we're here waiting anyways, we'll take out four ways, probably. Looks like just fine on, on them or something. Oh, I've only 24% for war support. That's better than it was before. Pass control. Oh, the assault team has reported they have entered the caves beneath the vault, but they were beaten back not only to the high spore count, but the amount of spore carriers, uh, spore plants, and giant manises in the caves beneath. The officers requested that defoliant be deployed down there as well, and the barrels of the stuff were being prepared by the chemical core. The science team, meanwhile, has begun the research into the vault and its food production capability. It seems of a secret to the vault's expansive flora is none other than Boveria Modicana, the fungus that caused this mess. Well, I hope maybe it was a side effect, this was a major setback, because we can, can't hand out a fungus that turns people into plant-like zomb zombie hybrids on the hope that they can grow more food. Well, darn it. Next time, maybe. Is Kaiser out of the four states, Commonwealth? That is a question being asked by the caravan companies, prospectors, and travelers hoping to make their fortune in the Arizona desert. While the U.S. Army said that most of the Legion was destroyed in battle, reports of ambushes by red-clad marauders and holdouts deep in the desert. Regardless of the Legion situation, many that has not stopped a deluge of individuals from entering the lands. Many have also turned their sights to Utah and Colorado, hoping to make contact with New Canaan and explore the legendary Dog City. The federal government has expressed the dangers involved in venturing too far into the frontier, and has asked that any and all individuals check in at their local records office before leaving. If you thought the Mojave was hot, just wait, my boys and girls. You gonna drop here too, huh? Oh, we could risk it by dropping everybody and then being completely cut off. We could do that. Oh, did you get. Oh. There we go. Pre war infantry kits. I can do that too. Why not? We only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, research slots. It's only 8, you know. It's not enough, obviously. Ah! Good. Forgot about the Navy from the last ship. Actually, the game didn't crash at the end of the last episode. It was actually very smooth, surprisingly. Uh, what do we got here? What are we working with? Uh, that's a good thing in itself. Yeah. It's a good thing in itself, too. That is not great. There we go. Yeah, I'll help him out. Anything here? Nope. Then I really care about too much. Um, honestly, with us down here, I might just give us that Mexico. Maybe we'll see. Maybe all repair is fine. Up to 12. If you need more, that's fine too. I'm not upset about that at all. The reservation. It's a great surprise. The underground facility, the lost outmost nuclear testing facility, to survive, but it's become popular by ghouls. Wait, why do they need slaves? The Secret Service took out the Gatling guns regarding the reservation, and a few fat men overran the facility with minimal enclave casualties, and the secrets were revealed when we stormed a room labeled the Green Chamber. The vats contained humans with bloated stomachs and was dead silent, save for a baby's cry. Some of the ghouls had created a ghoul baby. One of the ghouls claimed these tests would ensure a future for ghouls with additional refinement, but most find using humans as brood mares to be horrific. Some of the ghouls plead for us to spare their youth and claim that they could re reproduce on their own. We'll stir the facility off. See, but what do you do with these ghoul kids? I want to just murder them. I guess spare the kids? Eh, fine. I mean, not murder them, but end an abomination to human humanity? I don't know. I don't know. 
We gave them rights. I guess, you know, I guess the Constitution does say you do have rights. City dogs. It's gone to the dogs. Denver's a special case in the wasteland. While controlled by the hanging dogs, they never controlled the city itself, of course. Instead, they roamed the outskirts while the city was overrun with thousands of packs of wild dogs, if not more, and then were the cyber dog problem. However, despite all this, it became a distinct salvage culture. The salvagers owned a relationship with the uh, hanged dogs that changed somewhat with the rival Kaiser and more or less ended upon the, his arrival. Or our arrival, really. Sporting power armor, air support, mechanized units, and the itchy trigger fingers, we managed to clear out the large swaths of the so called dog city. And early salvagers, settlers, and caravans had made for the legendary mountain city. Uh, while some are still calling it Dog City due to the old maps and parlance, we've been forcing its real name Denver on all official papers. Now we can do something about that smell. Burn to the roots. After a liberal application of the defoliants, flamers, and even a few incinerators, uh, we found the caves around the vault have been cleared out. Casualties remain low. Sadly, after one of the engineers was ambushed by a pack of spore caterers, so those said carriers were quickly turned to ash by quick acting troops nearby. Air quality tests have found no trace of spores, but demolition teams are standing nearby. Flamers in hand and scientists conduct more sample tests. Lastly, we need a spore carrier and power armor. Oh god. During the clearance operations, we encountered a ghoul stranded in the cave. She was a raised area, and thus didn't inhale any of the defoliant. The ghoul, a scientist named Keeley, wasn't expecting the cavalry to save her and is grateful for the rescue. She's offered her expertise to her scientist team, having been sitting in the vault for, for, uh, the, for the former NCR Office of Science and Industry, and is thankful we aren't trying to use a bow battery out Morticana to grow crops. What's more, she thinks she can assist with a lead on her scientist where uh, we're, was developing. Good. Let's see if the good doctor wants a job. By the rockets regular, with the liberation of the Bloomfield Space Center, we could use one of those pre-war shuttles to, to send someone into orbit and reactivate the Eagle Eye orbital platform. Some scientists question whether a one-off propaganda event is even worth doing, but this could also let us reactivate the spy satellites in the Enclave place of America before the war, too. Let's send in the courier. Wait, wasn't one of those ghouls in astronaut for the war? President Douglas Granite, several hours ago, our astronaut's spaceship crashed in the Pacific Ocean off the Boneyard. Although he is fine, he said he didn't want to talk about what he found in the Eagle Eye, and all the records seemed to have been wiped. The station itself it crashed in Northern California a short while ago, but on the plus side, it did reactivate those other spy satellites. Wait, what did he find up there? Reaching for the stars, huh? Further store Fort Bliss, sitting on the banks of the Rio Grande, Fort Bliss served as a training center for the United States Air Force or Air Defense Command, as well as a staging point for the operations in Mexico. Safety regulations, nice. South Tech, ooh, it hurts our HP though. Nice. Keep doing it. My god, do we need more, more sport? Replicators. Energy. Uncivil. Uncivil and unrest. If you're under brothers, please go ahead. Find another place. It's alright. Ghouls in the villa. How many more doggos, too, huh? There you go. Uh, pitch firefighter erupted in the streets of the villa as our troops engaged with an endless number of what we thought were crazed demanded tribals after capturing one alive. We managed to tear this suit and his head off to reveal not a man, but a mutant, one we've never seen before. This will explain why they managed to get up after taking dozens of lasers to the face and only disintegration or dismemberment seems to work. Upon learning that, our troops forment their uh, issue weapons of using cryogenic equipment to freeze large amounts of them and then shatter them with well-placed punches and even a few kicks. This gave us an advantage for a time, and we managed to establish a forward command post in the form of a police station. Curiously, we found evidence of a super mutant having been in the station, but it's nowhere to be found. Operations to clear the villa will continue through the week of an interesting note. Our troops have been collecting Sierra Madre tokens as a sort of keepsake for the adventurers, with some trying to collect as many as possible. But they're just feral mutants. We've handled feral mutants. I don't care if they get back up out after we shot them. Shoot them again. It's too much good there for us. No, no, we're going to go all the way through this thing. I don't think anything here is going to give us uh, more war support, will it? Trade note income. Oh, building slots. Terrain solicitations. Energy, so yeah. Lead your marches? Well, I don't think so. Uh, the First Amendment. Uh, we're going to do Monster of the East. Kaza and his Legion. 
For the Stuart Davis Monthan Air Force Base. Once known as the Boneyard, the base was home to hundreds of derelict aircraft, though in the intervening years, and what goes on in Tucson and Arizona in general, we doubt much left. Cleansing the Villa. Match pushing to Puesta del Sol and Salida del Sol, with the endless number of ghoul people's attacks becoming more and more desperate. Made worse by the fact that the narrow streets prevent precision and vertebrate strikes, observation have, have, has seen the ghoul people emerging from under the city and probably the city's sewer and maintenance shafts. The command of the expedition has obviously created a hole in the city's central fountain in the villa. This would open a massive cavern from which a prepared defense could be used to annihilate the swarms of ghoul people we theorize are down there. And then venture in guns blazing and eradicate the rest, but it's a risky gamble, might work. Change that bond. My brother may be traitors in tech quarters but and borderline psychopaths, but at first their hearts were in the right place. Yet over the time their ideals were corrupted, and some in the cases even perverted. Which is disgusting. Heart of the swarm. How much money do we have actually? Oh, I got more than enough to do this. Let's invest money into them. The detonation were creating a massive opening of the depths of the ghoul ghost people's supposed hive. For a few moments, it was eerily quiet, then our troops heard the howling of the swarm, and hundreds of things came scrambling out. The pair to pair defense position was another very overrun. With the ghost people clamoring over dead bodies and, and ash piles arising from when they collapsed, it was a timely intervention of vertebrate strikes that saw the, saved the position. And our troops advanced from the dungeon below. A laser fire could be heard from the surface, and the team's commander is requesting cryogenic support due to the copious amounts of cloud that's down there. How many are down there? Good God. We found a survivor, pushing into the residential district. We began standard building clearing procedures hampered only by a prevalence of that darn cloud. During the course, though, our troops were surprised to come across a survivor, an intelligent ghoul by the name of Dean Domin Domino, the famous pre-war singer. While we were surprised to survive the song, he's just as surprised the U.S. government is still a thing. He managed to smooth talk his way into having our troops not shoot him, but he remains trapped in his room. According to him, he works alongside a courier who was making their way through the Sierra Madre, and after being a series of events, we, hard, we find hard to believe. He's ready to return to the role, but stopped by his old room to collect a few things. However, one of the ghost people followed him, and in ensuing scuffle broke his leg. He's been healing ever since, and when he heard us approaching, he decided to lay low for a little longer. Until his shooting stopped, he asked for medical assistance. It's cool, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it can sing. What a treat! It's amazing glorification to destroy his vocal cords. Another survivor. With no end of the ghoul of people in sight, and the constant threat of the cloud, progress has been somewhat slow. I managed to take the Villa Clinic, which is home to a series of advanced auto docks, making the place a prime location for four aid station. I attempted to push across the street. Our forces were pinned down by highly accurate sniper fire. Well, it's not an act of the ghoul people. This is someone who knew how to handle soldiers and power armor. After an antagonizing few hours dueling with some of the expedition's best sharpshooters, and copious use of the auto dock, we cornered the ceiling. What could be guessed was where they stayed this entire time. An assault team was being prepped to storm the palace, but we recognized the sigil outside the place as the wings, gears, and sword of the Brotherhood. Another Brotherhood terrace, of course. Look at all that manpower. Sniper down, her assault team pushed into the safe house. Fighting alone, scarred, a yet determined woman inside. She tried to put up a fight, but unarmored and owned only with her fist, she had no chance. One of the soldiers got a lucky shot off his labor's rifle, and she was reduced to ash on the spot. Whoever she was, it doesn't matter, another brother and surgeon down for the count. Good, get back to clearing the Sierra Madre. A curse shelter. Cleaning crews and a few archaeologists have entered behind her troops to sift through the wreckage and clean the frozen uh, cloud residue. A few discovered a set of notes written by the predecessors of the ghost people, preserved through time by the cloud. Upon reading it, we discovered our horror that the ghost people are actually the mutated remains of the resort's construction crew, staff, and police. Many of them curse and clear the previous owner and others have expressed horror of what's become of them. A few others, probably medical staff, documented the mutation. The tragedy is sad. The opening is effectively open a second front and are cleansing of the Sierra Madre. With the service forced pushing into the villa, a third team being prepared to assault the resort casino itself. Compared to some vaults, they got off easy. Another army depot. Well, sir, Fort Sierra managed to save the enclave through Dornan and we rebuilt it to full capacity. We need to thank Nerino primarily for allowing Mini to skip the pre-war installation. The same cannot be said for Pueblo Depot. Been cleaned by the Brotherhood. The base now husk of its former self, and only our lack of facilities out west are the reason we're putting stock into the old base. Further, it can serve its purpose as a supply depot for operations in the Rockies and a central location to store our Legion and prisoners. Do we store chemicals here? Removing the Legion from the Fort Navajo. Pre-war, the National Guard training. Camp base became a sprawling installation following a pacification of communist terrorists in Mexico. It received a hit during the Great War and was left to ruin until Kaiser and the Legion came along. Seeing the use of its facilities for a staging and training ground, the Legion cleared it out and the place became a massive fortress and symbol of the Legion's, Legion's might. Even the mighty U.S. had trouble securing the mighty fortress, having to resort to leveling the place with heavy ordnance. Ironically, the heavy shelling destroyed much of the Legion infrastructure and the Army is restoring its base to its pre-war America ways. It would also be the site of a massive prisoner camp as we figure out what to do exactly with the survivors of the Legion. Get the Legion bulls out of here. 
I'm so, I apologize for so much reading, but I kind of like the reading. Uh, further story, Aurora Armory. What was meant? A small uh, Colorado National Guard base turned into extensive and military intelligence installation pre-war. Khazar and his legion. To say legion was flawed is an understatement. However, no one can deny Edward made a gold out of lead, turning the desperate tropes of Arizona into a military superpower that gave the NCR run for its money, and even took on our own troops and power armor. Yet the legion followed Khazar, not his ideals. Many knew that when Mr. Sala was removed from the picture, the legion would collapse into infighting. We should know it was a contingency plan with a dude. Taking those mistakes in stride, the success of the Legion could be applied to the United States. Though early scrubbing and given a star spangled coat of paint, of course, we're not turning women into birth factories. People should follow America's ideals, not the president. True to Kaiser. Oh, sense of duty should be admired. True to Lanius, which we could use right now. Really? LARPers? Everyone contributes? Or no one does? I kind of like that one. Yeah, it seems like the, the sound seems like the one we should probably do for our one. Yeah, listen to the followers. The followers spread the torch of knowledge to the ways and predated the NCR. At the very least, we can use their teachings to build sustainable communities. For now, at least. Haywire Holograms. Uh, we, the third front has has officially opened with the reaching of the resort itself. We expect more ghost people. Instead, we've run a foul of casinos, highly advanced security systems. Holographic projectors that seem immune to all types of weapons fire. Our team is currently pinned down in the lobby of the resort as technicians try and find a way to disrupt the casino's security system. Outside in the villa, our troops have managed to push into the remaining villas under conducting cloud clearing procedures. Already, engineers, construction crews, and prospectors are rummaging through the cleared areas and beginning the restoration processes of the resort. We should have the place cleaned up and running within a month. Why just why? This vault tech level is stupid. Restore Holloman Air Force Base. Uh, an air training base in New Mexico served as a main western fortification for the Blue Rose Society. Well, that was pointless. We not, we want another war movie. Yes, sir. Once we get there. And we will deal with Eureka. We will. Custom built capacitors are nice. It's too at a time. Villa secured after days of heavy fighting and an unforgettable fortunate few losses. Uh, Army combat teams and engineer units have reported that the villa is secure. Much of the cloud has been cleaned up, although engineers are reporting that the shoddy pipe infrastructure will continue to leak the stuff until the source of it in the ventilation is found. In fact, the engineers are reporting that much of the villa is in disrepair, and the buildings themselves are of relatively cheap pre-war making and design. It will take some time and effort, especially since prospectors and archaeologists are keen to start digging around in the area we've cleared. Of note, one of our teams found an emitter that displays holograms like the ones reported in the casino itself. This might be the key to defeating the holograms since they seem to be impossible to kill. Get it fixed up, we can settle people there. Families in New Vegas. New Vegas is one of the richest cities in the wasteland, but it's also an influence of some power families. With economic growth, they've begun to spread their influence beyond New Vegas, and we need to decide how to handle them. Grant's always considered himself a family man. More money. Sergeant Dorian leads the police to break the families, because he's selected out with the old. Families faced with a threat of law go legit. We've completed the judicial branch. Well, we gotta have to go this one, because we get more legitimacy. And we're not always going to need legitimacy. Sometimes we are, but not all the times. It eats radiation. Our research into the uh, uh, research into Bovaria Morticana revealed some interesting insights. What is a deadly and horrible fungus that should be purged from the record? Did it have one quality? The darn thing eats radiation. Sort of. The vault containing far less radiation than was normally expected of a dilapidated vault. What's more, the plants growing around the vault, they seem to be unaffected by radiation from the surrounding countryside. After a close study, the fungi was observing the uh, performing radiosynthesis. Metabolizing the ionized radiation, effectively eating and even shielding the rest of the vault. It'll take a biologist some time to transfer this ability to a safe or non mutating form of fungus, but this breakthrough could lead to us clearing up the various radiation pockets that dot the wasteland, even eradicating rat storms that still plague the landscape. There's even more. That ghoul sign is a bit, aside being a bit rough around the edges at first, has gone on well with our team and has shared some of her insights into the plants of Vault 22. She tested and perfected a food additive that acts as a mild stimulant in humans. It's completely harmless. Seems we're even able to salvage the food problem within the vault as well. Well, that's a nice development. Awesome. Hey, more infrastructure construction speed. Awesome. Uh, this one gives more daily political power. Caps income, why not? New systems care package. Ah, we got the money for it, right? Hollow jamming. The trick worked. B. Jerry rigging a hollow emitter to a portable engine generator. We're able to jam the hollow uh, grams emitting a signal, as well as use up a rigged up uh, sensor to find where the emitters are hidden. All right, destroying every last one of them, according to... Uh, the upper floors, we've discovered nothing but dead bodies of the resort guests. Dead by the Great War, killed by the resort security systems. Well, we're sure to tear that out, that cursed system, and dispose of it. Unfortunately, there are no more survivors, ghoul fight or otherwise. There's evidence of others being here, but they seem to have long since left the area. We're also getting reports of the toxic cloud on some upper floors, meaning we might have to do a full-scale renovation of the whole place at this rate. Start sending out invitations to the new gala event, and Maxon's ideals. The Brotherhood of Steel, the air secessionist from the United States Army. 
Driven by contempt for actions with war effort, they nonetheless try to uphold the traditions of the army by protecting his people. Well, that's what Maxim tried anyway. So the ideas of the Brotherhood were soon bastardized to horror technology. A uh, disregard for human life and seeing anyone outside their hall halls with nothing more than contempt. Made worse by a hamstrung elder council who pushed their problems out the door and pretend they were never existed, leading to the rise of the Washington Brotherhood and Elijah. Yet they remained true to their cause and survived more than one attempt at destruction by their foes, even rebuilding entire nations from the Midwest to the East to Texas. Use Maxim's ideals to force something new. Mason's teachings. Life as technology is, uh, is important too. This what horrors can technology unleash? Reaching for the stars, Mr. President, there's a secure drone outside your door and it's got Mr. House's pictures on it. Now the cowboy, Mr. House himself. Seems he wants to speak to you about something important. It's regard to the reinstated Space Administration. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Give them an audience, well, this is the first. After the century. Mr. President, while I typically loathe working with governments of any kind, you have proven yourself resourceful beyond even my means. In just a few years, you have done what the NCR had only dreamed of. The Legion failed to realize the brother could never achieve more than I have in 200 years. For that, you have my respect. What a mark for news of ground floor opportunity in the most important undertaking on Earth. To shake the bonds of this planet and spread out among the stars. What I thought would take me 50 years, we can achieve in just a few months. In a few years, we could have a lunar colony and a decade of Martian colony. American colony ships searching for new frontiers. You have Bloomfield and I have Repcon Aerospace. What I'm offering America is a future. A future among the stars, alright? Restore the Space Administration. Half the kind of still travel, let's do it. Space Mechanic, fourth wall breaker. Just a test run of the whole spacing as I try to develop it further. At its core, it's a scavenging mechanic, reverse engineer, but I won't be adding anything inside a few events. So more or less a little fun thing I ended up to make, see what I could do. I want to expand on it, but for now, it's a series of decisions and events all linked together. Nothing too fancy yet. I'll get there eventually. So far, now enjoy. And to the mod developer and of who made Enclave Reborn, of course, fantastic. Well, Enclave Redux, rework and whatever that the name of it is, um, thank you for doing this. I haven't said that yet, but thank you for doing all this. This is fantastic. The Delta X. It seems Mr. House has not been idle. Despite losing his rockets at Repcon, he's brought forth designs from Delta X, an upgrade to a pre-war Delta 9 rocket ICBM. A new model comes with a larger crew module, better engines and safety features, and a suit of electronics and systems that far outclass its predecessor. But it's all buildable quite easily, using post-war industrial techniques, with which Mr. House lacks, but we do not. We can begin production in immediately. He came prepared, I believe, and we see. Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss served as a fortress during, along the Rio Grande, a development center for our air defense. While well, the pre-war, that was much needed a component, given the Chinese bombers striking in the northern lower 48. Today, it's almost frivolous to return to the base of protecting against air, or so we thought, from the power gliders to the airships of the Brotherhood. Uh, the Enclave may have dominated the skies once, nowadays we're finding ourselves challenged. Regardless of how they manage to get the better part of flight characteristics down, the facilities at Fort Bliss will also maintain air control, as well as serving as a jumping point off for a continued path and push into Texas. Seriously, how do travels have aircraft? Nice. Shoot some pit boys, thank you. Further store tool, Army Depot. Serves both munition storage and fortification towards New Jerusalem. We can still retain use for this old pre war installation, especially as we move further east. Fort Huchuka. Home to one of the U.S. Army Intelligence's and Training uh, Center. The place is of particular interest for Colonel Callahan, which is used to further store Enclave Intelligence. Sure, why not? So that's what it's here for, right? And we're almost done with this convention warfare stuff, too. Heart of the Sierra Madre. As restoration and archaeological expeditions on the surface, the casino begin. Our trips descend into the lower levels of the casino, in hopes of finding the source of the cloud. Curiously, the elevator shaft leading to the place seemed to be disabled, and our trips were forced to rappel down to it, arriving in the basement. They were beset by the cloud, holograms, and curiously ghoulish people. But now all this has become standard procedure, and the basement was secured quickly, save for the ghost people. They seemed to be coming out of a hole, and were arriving in greater numbers as their troops pressed on. They didn't appear to be bothering the security holograms either, and the holograms actually assisted us for a short time, of course. That was until the 13 cleanse of sewers and a maintenance tunnel appeared. Well, there still needs to be a few sweeps. Looks like the mutated crew are no longer a threat. All that's left is the Sierra Madre vault, which look, looks as locked up as any vault tech vault. We've broken into the vaults before. Nothing new. The followers. The largest humanitarian organization this side of the Rockies. If not the entire wasteland, doctors, teachers, farmers, they focus on providing humanitarian aid and endearing them to many struggling sentiments. And many view them as saviors in the wasteland. Of course, just as many governments, ours was included. See them as radical anarchists and rabble rousers. Furthermore, their open policy of membership has allowed many we would see as criminals to escape the long arm of the law, despite this. They've managed to survive for over a century and will continue to do so. Such an enduring legacy be good, be good to put to use put to good use. Education can only do a prosperous society. Rebuild and re-educate. Perhaps some things should be free. Anarchists and bleeding hearts, nothing more. 
Er, the restorer still. Fort still. Once home to the U.S. Army Field Artillery School. Perhaps we can uncover something here. Further restore our Air Force Base. One of our old training bases in Phoenix. We can only imagine what happened to it under Legion rule. A grizzly discovered the vault. Um, well, designed like a nuclear fallout shelter. Uh, well, it's all far easier to cut into than expected, mostly as we were expecting vault tech levels of quality protective measures. Cutting all through the reinforced glass viewport, we accessed the vault with ease, and the doors were simple, a ceiling type, similar to across the wastes. Inside, however, was a dead body. The blue robes identifying him as a brotherhood elder, meaning he could be the missing elder Elijah from the Mojave chapter. A preliminary report from one of our medics showed he died of a stroke. Several piles of discarded food stuff and water are off in the corner near one of the Sierra Madre vending machines. Surprisingly, there's no gold bars or money down here. Someone must have stolen everything out of the vault and made off with it. Not a huge problem. The casino's ours. We can commence restoration operations immediately. Should have let go while we had the chance. Yes, we're building quite a few of these up at the same time. There's on a boneyard. Seeing it on the edge <clears throat> in the former city of Tucson. David Montham Air Force Base was uh, known pre-war as a boneyard, and the name carried over into the post-war era as well, known for the dismantling and disassembly of aircraft formerly in use by the U.S. government. During the resource wars, the Air Force started raiding whatever they could to cut costs and keep aircraft in the air. Post-war, the cult of NAS in Tucson continued raiding it to get engine parts for the races, destroying the various defenses that usually kept pre-war bases safe from this kind of thing, sadly. This has left the base picked clean of the parts, and that's not including the Legion, and the little experiment with an Air Force. Thankfully, the short-minded Legion and cult, speed cult failed to raid the base or failed to raid the hard drives of the base, revealing a treasure trove of maintenance procedures from the pre-war that allows to keep planes in the air longer, increasing our mission effectiveness. Man, someone should have told the Brotherhood about this. But they're all gone. Scavenged first solar stockpiles. If you don't know about these, please go ahead. I've not read about those before. Cool. About those vending machines. Some of our technicians in the Sierra Madre have made note that the Sierra Madre vending machines aren't like normal wedding, nor normal vending machines we've seen out on the waste. They seem to be matter converters of sorts, able to use a prepackaged material in the Sierra Madre chips that our chips have been collecting to create a series of pre-programmed items from food and medical supplies. I thought they were just a way to line Sinclair's pockets before the war. This could actually set us on the path for a post-scarcity world. However, those tokens can only replicate anything on a small scale. We're reducing it on an industrial scale take time, not to mention we still need materials to actually put on the tokens themselves. So I'm pointing out that we can dispatch these machines to remote medical outposts to assist in supplies for the time being. Our soldiers, nevertheless, are upset that their souvenirs have been confiscated. Well, it's a start. Prepare Delta X rocket. How much money do we have? But we don't have enough. Make almost 900 caps, though. Oh, I'll wait for that. Aura, Aurora Intelligence Armory. It was once a relatively small armory expanded exponentially, exponentially as the resource wars were kicked off, acting as an extension of Fort Carson. The armory served as a control center for counterintelligence operations against the common sympathizers and Chinese infiltrators operating in and around Denver and beyond. The vast intelligence surveillance equipment locked tightly behind the closed doors are now back in the proper hands and are ready to be put forth against the various leader, raider gangs that still stalk the American waste, as well as aid us in our upcoming battles against the Midwest, something Colonel Callan is all eager to get at. Well, I'll secure us see further store Tinker Air Force Base, a heavily aircraft training center in Oklahoma that sits on top uh, on the doorstep for move east. Further store Kirtland Air Force Base, but construction uh, continues. Welcome to the U.S. Air Force Nuclear Weapons Command, the fact that is sitting on it is terrifying. Construction crews are continuing on the renovation of the Sierra Madre. There have been around a few remaining ghoul people sightings requiring a modest security assignment. Engineers and technicians are researching the source of the cloud, which continues to or plague efforts. However, the word of the Sierra Madre is a treacherous size here from afar, especially since it was considered a myth and not an actual place. We spent too much to back out now. The Gannon Doctrine. To teach the raiders on the troubles that freedom is the sovereign right of every American. We'll get that out one eventually, so the Gannon Doctrine. One of the enclave theorists, a scholar from outdated or outmodeled or outmoded pre-war governments has suggested that the United States government would be best served by extending a helping hand to the settlements of the waste, offering membership in, re in the United States in exchange for aid and protection. It's worth a shot. Well, we'll try to incorporate them, but we'll see what happens. There's been a lot of reading this episode. What's going on at Holloman? Uh, slated to assist and support the White Sands Missile Range, the base, was given over to the Air Combat Training and Ground Support Operations in the early 21st century, although in the waning months of the resource wars, it suddenly became home to a series of conspiracy theorists, or theories, involving aliens and top secret government cover-ups. Pretty normal. Given that we came from the greatest conspiracy of all time, you think we know about this. Perhaps it has something to do with the nearby remains of the Blue Rose Society and how they're very active in the region. Regards, the pilots have reported strange lights in the distance, and the odd radio call that seems appear seemingly appears and disappears out of nowhere. All this could be just ghosts of the past, pre-war technology still operating. However, sweeps of the area found nothing, but the base commander thinks it's just hysteria. Keep looking to the sky. Why not? Secure John's wall fortifications, I guess. We don't need them, though. So we'll see. 
and of the cloud. Deep within the maintenance tunnels of the Sierra Madre, we found the resource of the cloud. The rust-colored toxic gas has been plaguing our efforts since we arrived. And you guys go here. Here was where the cloud was at its thickest, even resistant to our cryogenic weapons that we've been using. As if it was adapting to our weapons, but that's just poetry. Simply doubling our efforts, our troops discovered the central ventilation of the central pumps container that is the source. Petrified remains of the ghost people. Remain frozen where they stood, their suits too corroded to move, and their respirators clogged with residue. Setting a series of cryo charges, we snuffed the cloud out of the source, and thus now begin a long process of renovation, with every last threat we can think of removed from the Sierra Madre. Finally, let's forget that thing ever existed. Keep repairing those turbines. The Ganon Doctrine. Bringing the new world, seeking out lads. We aren't the only power that deposed the NCR. To the east comes the fool who dreams of reviving the Roman Empire. To the south lads another legacy of the old war, Mr. House in New Vegas. And then there's a brother to steal who have no love for the NCR or us. Perhaps the enemy or enemy can be our not enemy? Well, they're all dead. So, they're not going to be our enemy because they're already dead. The brother to steal. To many, the brother to steal are the bastards who destroyed Navarro, and the brother is frankly terrified that California and Nevada are under the control of a faction with technology rivaling their own, but many of them, the brother, remember that when the waste looked to them as heroes. And we remember their origins in the United States Army. Perhaps we can reach a compromise? I'm betraying the Enclave here, but whatever. Sure, why not? Near completion of the Sierra Madre. Tool Army Depot first, though. A former joint munitions center serving the needs of the army primarily as it moved munitions east to west. After the war, those well, that would eventually form New Canaan renovated and expanded the base to serve their needs, creating a redoubt for their southwest approach to New Canaan well, itself. Well, we won't have um, a need for such rudimentary defense fortifications. We can use the center's extensive storage facilities for operations moving to the Rockies, easing our supply drains as we move further east. Secured and stored. Though the, through the use of engineers, 24 hour work crews, and the copious amounts of uh, robot labor, the Sierra Madre is close to completion. Inspection crews are going through the final checkups, often double, triple checking due to the nature of what was here. Furthermore, we've hired on a series of human staff, along with a few robotic mental menial laborers, replacing the old dangerous holograms and security systems from before. There's still the occasional ghost people siding in the maintenance areas below, where a series of sentry bots are placed on routine patrol 24 7 to ensure confidence and safety. Soon the gala event will go off for the realest time for over 200 years later. About time we put a life into this place. About darn time. Oh. Let's play for that rock. Play? P for that rocket stuff. Uh, Altus Air Force Base? A, for a supply base in Western Oklahoma, though it's been spit clean by the Scrappers Compact. Uh, Peterson Air Force Base. Our main defense of our NORAD, one of our most vital ports posted in all of North America. Rocket ready. Send curious the baggers. Like all survivors in the West, and the peoples of the baggers feel cut off and alone. Uh, adding them to the courier network is the first step in tying the baggers to a great society, reminding them where they truly belong. The, well, after 70 days, they're integrated in the American economy and cultural sphere, we can begin negotiations to re enter the Union. Like all survivors of the West, and the people of the bad land buckaroos feel cut off and alone. Oh, the same thing. Yeah. Foragers, Klamath, Sleepers. Oh, we're just going to take out four ways. U.S. Army Center for Intelligence Development. Home of the Center for U.S. Army Intelligence Training Center. Much of the base was set aside for training the entirety of the U.S. Uh, Army M1 Corps, and has been a particular interest for the Colonel Callahan since restoring Red Mountain. Given the sensitive nature of the base, much of it was locked down with deadly automated traps, which we quickly deactivated with many more of the insidious traps we dismantled. The base has been long since been restored to the full capacity and is already expecting to create to graduate the next generation of military intelligence officers and enlisted to assist in our operations across the continent. So how do you pronounce that name? Oops. Well, they're gonna be dead anyways. Sponsor, follower, expedition, and ciphers. Followers of the apocalypse carry the torch of knowledge across waste, I and mean, most of the tribes are just really survivors who lack the exclusive to rebuild society. Some proper encouragement that can take a proper way of life. Well, we gotta end up though at least with a war, right? Legion of Luke. Uh, Pre-war, the Luke Air Force Base was a center for flight training as well as a strike center for missions in Mexico. Located at the west, west Phoenix, the base was left untouched during the Great War, probably overlooked for more important targets or saved thanks to hostile lasers. Both were as Adela, as the automated defenses kept the tribes of Arizona at bay. Then the Legion arrived, and the twisted turn of events, the base was once again used as a training center, though mainly for new Legionnaires would be thrown at the automated defenses to see if they could disarm or disable them. 
This, of course, wore down the defenses, but also led a large pile of bodies we just discovered outside the base. Now that it's back in our hands, we've wasted no time getting it set up to return pilots to the air and to conduct air patrols to re remnants of a legion that may still roam the Arizona wasteland. Fly, Legion, fly, huh? Nice. Just demolishing them here and there. Love it. Beautiful. And we got them. Beautiful. Darn it. Dealing with your ego. Make four ways. Um, negotiate a group rate. Oh, we're going to this. Please go ahead. Use a house. I might recognize autonomy. I might just autocomplete this, Las Vegas. Yeah, just get it done. The greatest power in the wastes. The answer you are the brother of the most powerful groups in the waste, but there are others who strive to protect life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm sure we can find use for them. Eureka, Arcada, Enclave, Free Folk. They march around in our uniforms, they have our power armor, and the Granite Company worked for them in decades until venturing out in the Sierra uh, Madre, or <clears throat> Sierra Depot. The territory surrounding the port city of Arcada not only have some Enclave blood in them, alright. Padding and them themselves out of the greatest army in modern history, however. Um, and they're also some of the best armed mercenaries of the West Coast, and have an independent streak as wide as the Pacific. Granted, feeling a connection to the city has opted to visit the territory, hoping to bring them into the fold. Hopefully, our amazing American ways and treatment of the Amer West Side Americans will help us through this endeavor. Of course, they accept annexation. Okay, woo, okay. Oh, okay, that makes it easier. That makes it way easier for us. It's really nice, so. I think I might just end it there, my friends. And we read a lot in this episode. And we can continue to read a lot, and we will continue to read a lot, because that's all we do on this channel. We're a TNO channel. Oh, Old World Blues channel. We, we read a lot on this channel. But the Boomers, and Ellis Air Force Base, to finish this off. Sent from the Vault 34, the trial that became the Boomers took relative care for an Ellis Air Force Base. Though times changed, the base was back in the rifle of American hands. Restoring the base was the easy part, much of it having already been repaired from the tribe that lived there. Getting the solar array back online proved more difficult, and there was a curious infestation of exploding ass beneath the base. That has been dealt with, though not some without close calls. Base ready to receive increased aircraft activity and will once again be defending America's skies from threats abroad, even if the abroad means over in Arizona. At least it's they kept the place running. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue on with the Enclave. Thanks for watching. Have a great Douglas Granite rest of your day.